Papa Mochani Ikadasi. Yudhisthira Maharaj said, O Supreme Lord, I have heard from you the explanation of Amalaki Ikadasi, which occurs during the light fortnight of the month of Falgun, February, March. And now I wish to hear about the Ikadasi that occurs during the dark fortnight of the month of Chaitra, March, April. What is that name, O Lord, and what results can be ob one can obtain by observing it? The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, replied, O best of kings, for the benefit of everyone, I shall gladly describe to you the glories of this Ikadasi, which is known as Papa Mochani. The history of this Ikadasi was once narrated to the Emperor Mandhat Mandata, by Lom Lomasa Rishi. King Mandata addressed the Rishi, O great sage, for the benefit of all people, please tell me the name of the Ikadasi that occurred benefit during the dark fortnight of the month of Chaitra, and please explain the process for observing it. Also, please describe the benefits one gains by observing this Ikadasi. Lomasa Rishi replied, The Ikadasi that occurs during the dark part of the moon of Chaitra is named Papamomachi, Papamochani Ikadasi. For the faithful devotee, it removes the influences of ghosts and demons. O lion among men, this Ikadasi also awards the eight perfections of life fulfills all kinds of desires, purifies one's life of all sinful reactions, and makes him perfectly virtuous. Now please listen to a historical account concerning this Ikadasi and Chitaratha, the chief of the Gandharvas, heavenly musicians. During the spring season, in the company of heavenly dancing girls, Chit Chitraratha, once came upon a beautiful forest, bursting forth with a great variety of flowers. There he and the girls joined other Gandharvas and many Kanaras, along with Lord Indra himself, the King of Heaven, who was enjoying a visit there. Everyone felt that there was no better garden than this forest. Many sages were also present, performing their austerities and penances. The demigods particularly enjoyed visiting the celestial garden during the months of Chaitra and Vaishaka, April, May. <coughs> A great sage named Medhavi resided in that forest, and the very attractive dancing girls would always attempt to seduce him. One famous girl in particular, Manju Gosha, contrived many ways to allure the exalted Muni. But out of great respect for the sage and fear of his power, which he had attained after years and years of asceticism, she could not come very close to him. At a spot two miles from the sage, she pitched a tent and began singing very sweetly as she played a tambour. Cupid himself became excited when he saw and heard her perform so nicely and smelled the fragrance of her sandal paste unguent. He remembered his own unfortunate experience with Lord Shiva and decided to take revenge by seducing Medhavi. Using the eyebrows of Manju Gosha as a bow, her glances as a bowstring, her eyes as arrows, and her breast as a target. Cupid approached Medhavi in order to attempt to tempt him to break his trance and his vows. In other words, Cupid engaged Manju Gosha as his assistant, and when she looked at that powerful and attractive young sage, she also became agitated by lust. Seeing that he was highly intelligent and learned, wearing a clean white brahmana's thread draped across his shoulder, holding a sannyasi staff, and sitting handsomely in the ashram, 
of Chayavana Rishi, Manu Gosha, came before him. She began to sing sedu seductively, and the small bells on her belt and around her ankles, together with the bangles on her wrist, produced a delightful musical symphony. The sage Madhavi was enchanted. He understood that this beautiful young woman desired union with him. And at that instant, Cupid increased his attraction for Madhugosha by releasing his powerful weapons of taste, touch, sight, smell, and sound. Slowly, Manjugosha approached Medhavi, <coughs> her bodily movements and sweet glances attracting him. She gracefully put her tambora down and embraced the sage with her two arms, just as a creeper winds itself around a strong tree. Captivated, Medhavi gave up his meditation and decided to and decided to sport with her and instantly his purity of heart and mind abandoned him. Forgetting even the difference between day and night, he went away with her to sport for a long, long time. Seeing that the young yogi's sanctity had become seriously eroded, Manjugosha decided to abandon him and return home. She said, O oh, Great One, please permit me to return home. Medavi replied, But you have only just arrived, O oh, beautiful one. Please stay with me at least until tomorrow. Fearful of the sage's yogic power, Manjugosha stayed with Medavi for precisely 57 years, 9 months, and 3 days. But to Medavi, all this time seemed like a moment. Again she asked him, Please permit me to leave. Medavi replied, Oh dear one, listen to me. Stay with me for one more night, and then you may leave tomorrow morning. Just stay with me until after I perform my morning duties and chanted the sacred God tree mantra. Please wait until then. Manjugosha was still fearful of the sage's great yogic power, but she forced a smile and said, How long will it take you to finish your morning hymns and rituals? Please be merciful and think of all the time you have already spent with me. The sage reflected on the years he had been with Manju Gosha and then said with great astonishment, Why, I have spent more than 57 years with you. His eyes turned red and began to emanate sparks. He now regarded Manju Gosha as death personified and as the destroyer of his spiritual life. You rascal woman, you have turned all the hard-earned results of my austerities to ashes. Trembling with anger, he cursed Manjugosha. O oh, sinful one, O oh, hard-hearted, degraded one, you know only sin. May all terrible fortune be yours. O oh, rascal woman, I curse you to become an evil hobgoblin, hobgoblin, Bikasho. Cursed by the sage Madhavi, the beautiful Manju Gosha humbly beseeched him, O best of the Brahmins, please be merciful to me and revoke your curse, O great one. It is said that association with pretty bodies gives immediate results to their curses. Take effect only after seven days. I have been with you for fifty-seven years, O master, so please be kind to me. Madhavi Muni replied, O oh, gentle lady, what can I possibly do? You have destroyed all my austerities, but even though you have done this sinful deed, I shall tell you a way you can be released from my wrath. In the dark fortnight of the month of Chaitra, there is an all-auspicious ecodicy that removes all one's sins. Its name, Papa Mochani. O oh, beautiful one, and whoever fasts on this sacred day becomes completely free from having to take birth in any kind of devilish form. 
With these words, the sage left at once for his father's ashram. Seeing him either enter the heritage, Chayavana Muni said, O son, by acting unlawfully you have squandered the wealth of your penances and austerities. Madhavi replied, O father, kindly reveal what atonement I must perform to remove the obnoxious sin I have incurred by privately associating with the dancing girl, Manju Goshi. Chavana Muni said, Dear son, you must fast on Papa Motani Ekadasi, which occurs during the dark fortnight of the month of Chaitra. It eradicates all sins, no matter how grievous they may be. Medavi followed his father's advice and fasted on Papa Motani Ekadasi. Thus all his sins were destroyed, and he be again became filled with excellent merit. Similarly, Manju Gosha observed the same fast and became free from the half cobbling curse. Ascending once again to the heavenly sphere, she too returned to her former position. Though Masarishi continued, Thus, O King, the great benefit of fasting on Papa Mochani Ekadasi is that whoever does so with faith and devotion will have all his sins completely destroyed. Sri Krishna concluded, O King Yudhisthira, whoever reads or hears about Papa Mochani Ekadasi attains the very same merit he would get if he donated a thousand cows in charity and he also nullifies the sinful reactions he may have incurred by killing a brahmana, killing an embryo through abortion, drinking liquor, or having sex with his guru's wife. <clears throat> Such is the incalculable benefit of properly observing this holy day of Papa Mochani Ekadasi, which is so dear to me and so notorious. 